from New York is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself as much time as I may consume. Gentleman is recognized. I rise in support of this extraordinarily important resolution written with my friend and colleague, Chairman McCall. 18 days ago, the state of Israel suffered the greatest mass murder perpetuated against the Jewish people since the Holocaust. When Hamas terrorists invaded Israel by land, by sea, and by air. Behaving just like ISIS, Hamas terrorists murdered and beheaded soldiers and civilians alike. Babies were shot and burned in their cribs and reduced to smoldering piles of ash. Babies. Children were murdered. Teenagers were murdered. Men and women were murdered. Elderly people, including Holocaust survivors, murdered. Hamas has also taken 200 of those who survived into Gaza as hostages, including unaccompanied children, Holocaust survivors, and many American citizens. Mr. Speaker, Hamas's attack was truly unprecedented. And when you consider the size of Israel's population, proportionally it would be like 30,000 people dying in New York on 9-11. Just let that sink in a little. We must all acknowledge that Hamas is a cutthroat terrorist organization that exists solely to destroy Israel. And Hamas's terrorism does not help the Palestinians. And in this moment, it is critical for Israel to know that the United States of America stands firmly by its side in this battle against Hamas. Mr. Speaker, what I'm about to say next is also very important. There are innocent Palestinians in both Gaza and the West Bank that seek normal and free lives and want nothing to do with Hamas or other terrorist organizations. So we cannot lose sight of this. We must keep them, many of whom are also children, and their safety and their well-being in mind. And in the immediate term, we must find a way to ensure the safety of those innocents who are in Gaza's war zone. And I support the Biden's administration efforts toward that goal. The United Nations estimates that thousands of Palestinians have been killed since the terrorist attack on October the 7th. And we don't know for certain how many of those killed were civilians. But here's what we do know. We know that Hamas terrorists use Palestinians as human shields. And we know that every single one of them would be alive today if Hamas had not launched its terrorist attack. So we must, be, we must be aware and do all that we can to stop this war from expanding beyond its current scope. The administration and our allies are working around the clock to send messages and warnings to Iran and Hezbollah to stay out. President Biden underscored this message during his recent travel to Israel. Do not test America's will. This Congress will have Israel's back as it degrades and eliminates Hamas terrorist infrastructure. We know that it won't take a day. It will be difficult. For too long, too many have been willing to contribute to the delegitimization of the state of Israel. It is deeply concerning that even global leaders are already whitewashing one of the worst terrorist attacks in history, while Hamas and its allies blanket cyberspace and with misinformation about this war. Just yesterday, Turkish President Erdogan said that Hamas is not a terrorist organization. It is a group of Mahadeen defending their lands. This from the mouth 
of a NATO ally who has his own concerns about terrorists as an existential threat to his country. President Erdogan's rhetoric is dead wrong. It is ranked with hypocrisy, and its timing is extraordinarily dangerous. Mr. Speaker, the resolution before us is a bright spot of bipartisanship today during a very difficult time in American politics. 425 members of this House of Representatives have co-sponsored this resolution. And so there's no question in my mind that it will pass overwhelmingly, Democrats and Republicans alike, and most importantly, the American people, believe in the Jewish state and believe in its survival. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, I know the United States will continue to stand steadfastly with Israel to assure its defense and its long-term security. We will also, as President Biden has outlined, remain committed to ensuring that civilians in Gaza have access to safe areas and continue to have access to food, water, medical care, and other assistance without diversions by Hamas. We must also stay keenly focused on working to get United States citizens and their immediate family members to exit Gaza safely. I want to conclude, Mr. Speaker, by raising an issue that the United States and Israel must address. What does a successful ground operation in Gaza look like? And how do we achieve the goal of leaving Gaza to a responsible Palestinian government if Israel's effort to remove Hamas is successful? One thing is for certain, the path to peace will require more Arab states to recognize that Israel has the right to exist. And that will hold firm and will make sure that we could have thereby a two-state solution. But if you say Israel does not have the right to exist, you're saying that you do not want peace. So I urge our Arab friends to join the Abraham Accords and acknowledge Israel's right to exist because that's the pathway to peace in the Middle East. And to the people of Israel, I hope you learn of the passage of this resolution today and know that the United States Congress and the American people have your back. We mourn beside you and are working to provide the resources your government needs to defend you. We have deployed powerful military resources to the region to demonstrate just that support. We are working all of our diplomatic channels to assure your success. And we are in this together. We will not waver. We will not quit. We will stand with our ally, Israel. And with that, I reserve the balance of my